Hi, I'm Josh Reynolds. I'm site supervisor for Siglin and CSR. I build that bridge between CSR and Siglin for the installation of all our trackside equipment. Some of the challenges we face every day on the civil side is working the existing infrastructure, digging and operating beside live infrastructure that is operational and in place as we are working. So if we damage that infrastructure, that will stop trains, slow down trains, which is something we definitely do not want to do. Also, we are digging beside live HV, which is high voltage cables that is in operation right now. We have to make sure we do our due diligence to make sure we do not hit that HV because that can be fatal. We have to make sure we've got all of our processes in place. We know exactly where it is and that's with preparation works prior to us digging, locating it with NDD, which is non-destructive digging. That's a sucker truck which does it with water and a vacuum. With such a narrow corridor and the uh, tight time frame that we have, we do try to get things moving very quickly. So we uh, extend some of our hours and we work six days a week usually. But there are some jobs that we can only do during the night due to train running. So we have what we call ALBS, which is after last before first trains. And that we get in on the track in those little windows. All the areas that we have to find to make it work is metro infrastructure to make sure that we don't damage any of the equipment, but also TFPCs, which is Track Force Protection Officers. So they make sure that we are safe while we're working and we are not interrupting the train running. There's also the public is another major one out on this project. And we have the comms team, which we give advance warning to for if we're gonna interrupt any public while we work. We like to delineate us from the public as much as possible. So we put delineation fencing around ourselves so we can keep the public out and safe. One of the big wins that I've had personally is solving one of the problems that we face down in the Dandenong Junction and Cheltenham Road area. Where it's a very congested area. We've got existing rail bridges and a junction which goes two lines to Pakenham and another line down to Cranburn. And with such congested area, installing our trackside equipment can be hard and we put together a team of engineers and designers and myself and we came up with a plan to install all these trackside equipment with minimal delays to the train system and safely. Some of the lessons learnt that I've, that I've had is not only thinking about the projects that you are on now, but also the future works that are going to happen in the same area. So the project we're doing now, down in Dandenong outer area, also leads up to the next project, the HCT. So we've got to make sure everything that we install doesn't interrupt the next project. So it's always thinking that one step ahead, what's going to happen next in this area. Hi, my name is David Dargenio, Customer Experience Coordinator for the Caulfield to Dandenong Level Crossing Project. My role basically involves uh, planning and organising the busing strategy during our occupations and also on the operational interface uh, for Metro. So I look after all the customer service impacts uh, to the station staff and customers at the station. And I'm basically responsible from Sunland Cross to Pakenham and Cranbourne. One of the largest challenges we have is the distance uh, that is, uh, this project covers and also that affects our busing limits as well when we have occupations. So we're busing quite a large number of people. So trying to work through with traffic management to ensure that they're um, not disrupted too much and just preempting all the road closures to try and have that process seamless. So each day I evaluate the customer impact on the project. Uh, so any impact to the stations, the station staff and our rail commuters. So working out the best possible routes for our customers and ensuring that we don't extend their journey time too much. I plan our occupation months out, so at least a couple months out, basically liaising with stakeholders 
and working out my busing strategy, liaising with our traffic management, so trying to prevent uh, putting buses down congested roads and again that main part of not in, uh, impacting our customer too much during our disruptions. So obviously uh, our customers will be uh, getting off the train and boarding our buses, so make, making sure that that process is safe and secure for them uh, when they transfer from train to bus and also communicating to them uh, the reason for the disruption um, and, uh, that, uh, and also the duration so they can pre-plan their day or, or their week ahead. We're almost about to reach our million uh, customer uh, milestone. So we've almost bust a million customers and it's a proud moment to have done that so early in the piece. And it just really promotes uh, to the business on, on the impact of this line. It's one of the highest patronage in the network. Um, so to have successfully busted that amount of people is a great achievement for Metro and the project. Safety is our number one uh, priority, putting on extra staff to, to uh, just get people on their way in a safe and secure manner. I deal with a number of uh, stakeholders, so ranging from uh, PTV, uh, our labour hire companies, our traffic managers, uh, also our local traders here as well, um, and also local councils. Consulting with the business uh, is very important. I've had to instill trust in them that uh, I know what I'm doing and they trust me uh, to deliver a fantastic uh, product. So it's just building that relationship with the internal stakeholders and the business. So we are getting a lot of things done and you can see that with uh, the progress of, of the project and our customers can also see that and they're understanding uh, the reason for the disruptions and the impact. Proudest moments definitely have been the firsts that we've had with this project. Uh, so the first for Metro to have bust uh, from Caulfield to Dandenong, it's quite a long distance and also we've never had a weekday closure on this line so that's a great first for us to have done that successfully uh, and it's a proud achievement for the whole business um, to have done that seamlessly with and receive compliments. Hi, my name's Alex Metaphis. I'm part of the access team at the Caulfield to Dandenong Alliance, or CTD, and my current role is the Construction Interface Coordinator. I am Area 1 specific, so we do have the tightest corridor on the project. Some of the other key risk items would be the plant and train interaction through those tight corridors, and how that's managed from a day-to-day -day perspective. The way we generally look at that is that we delve into the desktop assessment, Having a look at the general access packs, construction methodologies, uh, safe work method statements, everything um, essentially that forms part of that work pack. Some of the specific risks would be that you know, potential for train and plant interaction is a huge one. So we've got you know, many different controls for that. So you will see delineation fencing running through our corridor. You'll also see um, TFPCs or track force protection coordinators out patrolling and ensuring that we're capturing you know, the right levels of control from a safe working perspective. And we've also got OSOs to ensure that we're protecting our, our plan operators and our staff from the overhead lines as well. We are operating trains on this, um, on this network right next to construction activities, so critical that we get it right. Um, we do go back into the business and ask those hard questions at times and we are pushing boundaries every day on this project. So this is definitely one of the busiest rail corridors in Victoria. So it's critical that we are constantly looking at risk. And we do that through our rail access processes as well. So generally, we ensure that the right level of controls are in place um, every day. My experience with the, with the project thus far has been all positive. Some of the key items for me would be uh, to work and integrate, I guess, what we're doing on this project throughout the industry and help progress that and improve um, day by day. It does take a huge team effort. And that team involves not only us within the access team, but the constructors out there as well. So your CPVs and lend leases, as well as train operations, track infrastructure, and all the other parties that do um, have a, a huge impact onto this project. It's a big fight for us to ensure that we've, we're building for the future, uh, that we've got you know, the, the right type of capability on our train network to reduce congestion wherever we can. Some of the key challenges would be that we are uh, you know, operating in a, in a industry that actually is quite short on resources, specifically rail um, knowledge. So that's part of our team's job is to help mentor a lot of these younger engineers and people coming out from other industries to ensure that they're building their wealth of knowledge as well. I think the benefits are there for the whole community, um, including Metro Trains. Um, 
um, you know, the chance of getting stuck out here on a level crossing is real. So I guess us as a level crossing project as a whole, we want to make sure that we are removing that risk wherever we can, ensuring that we're getting safer roadways, a safer operating network, reduce congestion wherever we can. And that's the number one goal of these projects, is to create a safer environment for the actual members of the community. And hopefully we'll all look back on this project and be glad and uh, proud of what we've undertaken.